Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so glad to see you all here. So a lot of you reached out to me in the comment section or on my email regarding some errors you have encountered when you're trying to create a DBC2 dataset. And I want to address a few of these errors and um, talk about why these errors occur and more importantly, how to fix these errors. So I hope to demonstrate um, how to fix these commonly encountered errors uh, while creating a DBC2 dataset in this video. So just to give you a little bit of context, these are the first few lines of the DC2 tutorial script that I have uploaded on my GitHub repository and I've annotated the location where the error is originating from. So until this point, we have read in the counts data, we have read in the sample information and we perform some, um, we run some commands to make sure that the columns that are present in the counts data are also present as row names in the call data and the order of the column columns that occur in the count data follow the same order in the row names. And followed by that, when we try to create DC2 data set, we encounter some issues. So it's important for us to understand some of the specifications that DC2 requires in terms of the count state and sample information in order uh, for us to avoid the errors that we um, encounter when we try to create a DC2 data set. DC2 expects us to follow certain um, data specifications when it comes to creating a DC2 um, data set using accounts data and the sample information. So there are essentially three conditions that needs to be fulfilled for us to create a DC data set without any errors. So the first condition is that the number of columns in account matrix must be equal to the number of row names or the number of rows in the call data. So here uh, in the example, we have counts data with four columns, each column corresponding to a sample and the associated sample information, which is stored in a data frame called call data. Here we have four rows, each row corresponding to a sample. So when we try to create a, a DC data set using this data, assuming the other two conditions are fulfilled, uh, we will get, we will be able to successfully create a DC data set without any errors. So essentially it checks for a condition where the number of rows in the call data is equivalent to the number of columns in the counts data. And since the number of rows in the calls data is equal to the number of columns in the call uh, counts data, we will be successfully able to create a DC2 data set without any errors. But had it been a situation where you have an extra row in your call data, let's say we have an extra row called sample 5 in our call data. And if we use this data to create a DEC data set, we will encounter an error. And essentially you will get this error where when it's checking the condition of the number of rows in the call data equal to the number of columns in the counts data, you will essentially get false. And essentially you will get this error when you're trying to create a DEC data set. So this error is basically telling you to check for your number of rows and your number of columns in your counts in your call data and counts data respectively to make sure that both of them match in order to create a DC data set. Talking about the next condition, once you have ensured that the number of rows in call data is equivalent to the number of columns in your counts data, you also need to make sure that these are the same, um, the, the rows that are present in your call data are the same as the columns in your counts data, meaning that all the columns in your counts data should be present as row names in call data and all the row names in your call data should be present as column names in your counts data. So again, let's consider the ideal case scenario where here we have accounts matrix where we have four columns, each column corresponding to one sample and we have four samples, sample one, sample two, sample three and sample four. So the rows in your call data should have sample one, sample two, sample three and sample four. So when you check the row names in your calls data to be present in the column names in your counts data, this will return true. And when you're trying to create a DEC data set, uh, assuming the other two conditions are fulfilled, you will be able to successfully create a DEC data set. But let's consider a scenario where you have, again, you have equal number of rows as number of columns in counts data, but you have sample five instead of sample two in the row names in your call data. 
this will throw you an error because these um, there is no column called sample 5 in your counts data. So in, in addition to making sure that there are equal number of rows and columns in your call data and counts data, you also need to make sure that these are the same, the names of the samples are the same. These are the same samples as row names in your call data that are present as columns in your counts data. And as for the last condition, once you've ensured that the number of row names are equal to in your call data are equal to the number of column names in your counts data, also making sure that these are the same samples uh, that, uh, that are present as row names and call data that are present as columns in your counts data, you also need to ensure that all the columns in your counts data are present in the same order as row names in call data. So let's take, uh, let's continue with the example that we were talking about in the previous slide. So here we have four samples and in the call data, you can see that again, we have four rows, sample one, sample two, sample three, and sample four. And if we use this data to create a DEC data set, you will essentially be thrown an error. Uh, and when you check for the condition where the column names in the counts data are present in the same order as row names in the call data, you will essentially get a false. So here, if you reorder or you shuffle um, the row names such that the order corresponds to the uh, column in the counts data, meaning that here we have the first row name as sample one, which is the correct order because the first column here is sample one. The second row name should be sample two because the second column in the counts data is sample two. Followed by that, we should have sample three as the third row name because the third column is sample three. And the last row name should be sample four because the last column here is sample four. So if you reorder your um, row names in the call data and you run the condition to check whether um, the column names, the order of the column names in the counts data is equivalent to the order of the row names in your call data, this will essentially return true. And if you use this data to create a DEC data set, you will essentially be able to create one without any errors. So let us switch screens to our studio where I will recreate some of these errors to show you um, how to uh, solve these errors and create a DC data set without any errors. So here I've pasted first few lines of uh, my code from the DC2 tutorial video that I've uploaded on my GitHub repository. And I will be using the data that I've also uploaded on my GitHub repository. So if any one of you wants to follow this along with me, can download the data from my GitHub repository and can perform these steps for yourself. Um, so we start by loading the libraries first and reading in the data. So looking at the number of rows here for the call data and the number of columns in the counts data, we can see that we have eight samples. So there are essentially eight rows in call data and eight columns in our counts data. So looking at these uh, numbers, we can say that condition one is fulfilled by default because we have equal number of rows in the call data with that of e uh, the number of columns in the counts data. So since condition one is fulfilled by default, we will be checking for condition two and condition three. So the next condition is to make sure that all the columns in the counts data are present as row names in um, the call data. So when we run this command, essentially it should return true. If it does not return true, then you need to ensure that um, all your samples are present as row names in call data and all the row names in your call data are present as columns in counts data. And if it's, and just make sure that they are labeled correctly because a lot of times you might have um, the same number of rows, but they are just labeled differently in your column, um, in your call data, or they're labeled differently in your, uh, as columns in your uh, counts data. So now the condition two is also fulfilled. Let us uh, ensure that these samples are essentially in the same order. And since uh, I have used this data previously in one of my tutorial, I do know that the order of the columns, um, order of the samples rather in my counts data are the same as the order in, as the row names in the call data. And I want to recreate the error because I want to show you how to solve the error. So I'm going to recreate the error by jumbling the rows here in the call data. So let us jumble um, rows in call data to recreate the error so I can show you how to fix the error. So I'm just going to run some command to um, jumble the rows in call data. And 
and finally when we check for the third condition to ensure that the order of the columns uh, in counts data are same as the order of row names in the call data we'll get essentially this this a command essentially will return a false and let's say if we decide to ignore this and still create a dc data set we will not be able to do so because it will give us an error that says that the row names in call data are not in the same order as a column names in the counts data and we need to fix that so let us take a look at the counts data and our call data again so if we take a look at the counts data you will you will notice that um, the samples here in the last three digits ending in 508 so the sequence of the samples are starting with samples ending in 508 509 512 513 and so on and so forth but if we take a look at the row names in a calls data you will be able to see that the the samples are ending the the order of the samples are the samples are ending in 512 513 520 so basically they are not in the same order ideally there should be samples ending in 508 509 512 513 and so on and so forth they would should be in the same order but now we can see that they are not in the same order so the fix for this is pretty straightforward i'm just going to write, write a one line command that is going to fix it so at this point you have two options either you can change the order of the columns in your counts data to match the order of the row names in your call data or change the order of the row names in your call data to match the columns or the order of the columns in your counts data so I'm just going to change the order of the counts data so that it matches the order of the row names in call data. So that is a pretty easy fix. I'm just going to reorder the column names in counts data by row names in call data. And let us save this back to counts data. And now let us um, check the third condition again to make sure that whether it returns a true now after we have reshuffled the columns in the counts data. And when we run this, we get a true value. And now that all the conditions have been fulfilled, let us try to create a DC data set. And this should not essentially throw us any errors. So when we run this, this runs successfully we have a warning message but we do not have any errors so we have uh, fulfilled all the data specifications that DC requires in order to create a DC data set without any errors so that's how you fix these common DC errors when you're trying to create a DC data set I hope you found this video helpful and informative if you did please make sure you hit the subscribe button like the video share it and leave your comments under the comment section until next time see you